Hello, I'm Gordon Lang, editor of DSLRtips.com. Professional portraits often have a blurry background which really allows the subject to stand out. It's actually a really easy effect to achieve with any digital SLR and in this workshop I'll show you everything you need to know. In this portrait shot we've used the camera's automatic settings and the exposure and focus are absolutely fine. But the background is as sharp as the subject and it really doesn't allow the subject to stand out. It's actually possible to control how much of your photo is in focus using your DSLR. You could choose to have everything from near to far in sharp focus or perhaps just the main subject itself on a nice blurred background. To do this you'll need to put your DSLR into aperture priority mode. This allows you to choose an aperture setting and the camera will automatically select a shutter speed to match so you'll have a perfect exposure. So it's still fully automatic but it gives you the flexibility of choosing the aperture and therefore controlling how much of the photo is in focus. Here's how it works in practice. To put your DSLR into aperture priority mode, simply turn the dial at the top to the letter A. If you're using a Canon model like this DSLR, you'll need to turn the dial to the letters AV. Now you can adjust the aperture by turning a dial that will either be at the front of the camera or at the back. The actual aperture value itself will normally be labelled with a letter F and you'll see it either on the screen at the back, through the optical viewfinder, or if your DSLR has a screen on the top you'll also see the aperture value here. When you change the aperture setting on your DSLR you're actually adjusting an iris that's built into the lens. Now this iris can be used to control the amount of light that passes through the lens and into the camera. But it also has an important effect on the amount of the photo that's in focus. When the iris is wide open only the main subject will be sharp. But as you reduce the size of the iris more and more of the photo will be in sharp focus. The aperture value that you change on your camera is known as an F number which stands for focal ratio. That's the focal length of the lens divided by the diameter of the iris at that moment in time. Now as the F number gets smaller the iris opens up and less of your photo will be in focus. And in fact when it's at its smallest setting only the main subject will be in sharp focus. As the F number gets bigger though the iris shrinks down and more of your photo will be in focus both in front and behind of the main subject. Now since we only want the main subject in this portrait shot to be in sharp focus we're going to choose the smallest f number that's available for our particular lens and that's f5.6. Now this number could be different depending on your particular lens and whether you're zoomed in or out. The amount of a photo that's in sharp focus is known as the depth of field. If you have a small depth of field that means that not much of the photo will be in sharp focus, probably just the main subject itself and everything in front or behind will generally be blurred. As you have a larger depth of field though, more and more of your photo will be in sharp focus, not just the main subject, but also things that are in front and behind of it, for example a distant landscape. Now adjusting the F number in aperture priority mode is the main way of controlling the depth of field, but there's also other things you can do to maximise the effect. For example, if you want to maximise that blurred background, you want to use longer focal lengths, so avoid wide angle and zoom in as far as your lens will allow you. It also helps as you stand closer to your subject. So here's that portrait shot again taken with the automatic settings and here the camera's actually selected an aperture of f11. This has resulted in quite a large depth of field which means the background is fairly sharp. Now here's a shot taken in aperture priority mode where we've manually selected the smallest f number available for this lens which was actually f5.6. To further maximise that blurred background effect we've also zoomed the lens in as far as it would go and also stood quite close to the subject. And the result is a sharp subject on a nice blurred background. This technique equally applies to any subject which you'd like on a blurred background. For example in this shot it's allowed the bottle in the foreground to really stand out. It's a great way to isolate the subject against the background. That's also ideal for wildlife shots like this one of a monkey, where a small depth of field has made the distracting branches of the trees almost disappear. The same applies to this shot of a puffin, where the grassy verge in front of it could have really been in the way, but by throwing it out of focus with a small depth of field it's much less of an issue. It's also great for close-ups, allowing you to concentrate on the detail of this flower, again without the background being distracting. If you really like this blurred effect and you take a lot of portraits, it could be worth buying a lens that's designed to maximise the effect. 
Lenses with bigger apertures have got smaller F numbers and can make the background even blurrier. This shot was taken with a 70mm lens with an f2.4 aperture and you can see how it's really allowed us to throw that background out of focus. It's important to remember that all the photos you take from this point onwards will have a small depth of field. So once you've taken your shot, always remember to return your camera to its automatic mode or into program indicated by the letter P. Controlling the amount of focus or the depth of field is an incredibly useful technique to learn and in fact many photographers use their cameras in aperture priority mode more than any other setting. It's really easy too, all you need to remember for that blurred background effect is to just zoom your lens in and choose the smallest f number that's available. For a step-by-step -step guide that accompanies this video along with many more techniques head on over to www.dslrtips.com